As a refresher from previous videos, .NET assemblies are identified by four key attributes. One, their basic name. Two, their version. Three, their public key. And four, their culture. Now, I didn't ex say this explicitly, but in the previous videos when I was compiling my code and I said slash out, remember we did something similar to C Sharp compiler and slash out, and then I said farm.dll. By saying farm.dll, that is how the C Sharp compiler knows what the basic name of an assembly will be. This basic name, it says, oh, the output file is farm.dll. In this case, if I hit Control shift b on my project, it will actually call my assembly scratchpad because that's the name of the project. Again, when I hit Control shift b though, Visual Studio names the output file uh, explicitly by the project name. Anyway, Visual Studio invokes csc.exe, the same as I'm doing on the command line, but instead of saying farm.dll, Visual Studio will say scratchpad.dll. So that's how we get the basic name. Now I want to version our assemblies. Here I have cow, and I've said it's going to be moo version 1. Let's set the version. There's a few ways to do it, but the most mainstream way of doing it is setting an attribute on the assembly and if this looks new and interesting to you go look at the attributes and reflections video I'm going to say assembly version which is a very basic attribute found in the system dot reflection namespace I hit control dot and hit enter there to get that to come back up we simply pass a string here and version numbers are identified by four elements they're four numbers slightly arbitrary but there's somewhat of a pattern to them we'll discuss later I'm going to say this is version one of our farm. Now recall when we did not do this, the default version was actually zero dot net or the C sharp compiler when it compiled this said, Oh your your version zero. But now I'm going to be explicit and say, hey, it's actually version one. Now generally we don't put these attributes in here. If you're actually in a project you can go to properties, right click here and properties, uh, click assembly information. You can fill this text box out, which is full of good things here and I could say assembly version is 3.14 which is similar to pi and that will actually generate another C sharp file in your project with an attribute for every single one of those text boxes but the key one I'm looking for is the assembly version which here I've said 3.14 we're not going to do this I'm actually going to uh, go over here and delete this file because uh, we're doing it the the hard way here I'm going to state it explicitly at the top of my code file instead let's compile this file to a library as we've done before again it's the only file currently in my directory I'm gonna C sharp compiler please create a library call it farm again when I say farm.dll the compiler will say oh, okay I'll name the basic name farm the basic name for the assembly will be farm and the input file will be main class.cs hit enter Compiler grinds, and now we have farm.dll. Let's write some code to compile against this. I'm actually going to highlight all of this, comment it out a couple times by hitting Control KC, and let's make a main class. I'm going to say class, me main class, and static void main, right there at the bottom of the of the screen. Let's bring that up a little bit. I'm going to say cow dot moo. Just like we did in the past video. I'll save that. Come over here and C sharp compiler. Please reference the farm dot dll because I know the farm has the cow code in it. I just compiled the cow code into farm. Reference the farm dll and let's say main class dot cs. Hit enter clear the screen, list the contents of the directory. We now have main class dot exe. Its assembly name, its basic name is main class, however. We did not explicitly specify a slash out when we did that last compile, so it just takes the name of one of the input files. We only have one input file. Anyway, main class dot exe, hit enter, and there is moo version 1. I'm going to change it up by hitting, uh, highlighting this, control kc, highlighting this and hitting control KU 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 uh, sounds like a haiku I'm gonna say this is moo version 2 and we'll say this is assembly version 2 I'm changing both the 
the text that will print here and also the assembly version. I'm going to recompile this file, but again, when I do, it will overwrite the farm.dll. Remember, this farm.dll right here, that's not a very good arrow, is it? But it is version 1.0. And main class.exe is compiled against version 1.0. In fact, we can actually prove that. Here I'll say ildasm slash out me il dot text main class dot exe let's look at me il dot text and in here we will see an extern reference to the farm assembly version one so our executable wants version one but we are about to overwrite this version one farm dll with version two this sounds scary doesn't it c sharp compiler please create a library uh, call it farm.dll, which will erase and overwrite our old farm.dll. Use the code found in main class.cs. I just want to verify this is commented out. Yeah, so we have a cow. We said version 2. Assembly version 2. Hit enter. Compiler grinds. Clear the screen. List the contents of the directory. And we still have farm.dll. But if I ildasm slash out me il dot uh, text farm dot dll we disassemble that and look at the resulting il we'll see that this assembly yes its basic name is farm but this is version 2 version 2 this is looking dangerous because main class dot exe does not want version 2 it wants version 1 it compiled against version 1 and we saw in the reference the extern reference there that it wanted version 1. So what's going to happen when I run main class dot exe? We've seen exceptions before when we couldn't find the DLL. Do you think we'll get an exception now? Or do you think it will run correctly? Pause the video, reason about it, come back. Allow me to hit enter, and it runs just fine. The default behavior for .NET is if you combine to a later version, let's, let's the later versions are better than earlier versions, not in, in all cases that may not be true I've, I've had apps update on my phone and I've had installs and things like that where oh it's the latest and greatest and it actually ends up working worse than the previous version so the, using the latest version isn't always ideal but generally it is anyway .NET will default to the latest version I'll show you in in future videos how we can get .NET to not do that but in this case that's kinda nice we've dynamically linked to a new version of the DLL. I just pushed a new farm, but I did not have to recompile this EXE. That's called dynamic linking. Linking at runtime. Very nice feature. Loving it.